So great catching up with my next guest, and she's got a really big fight coming up here in a few weeks against Misha Tate. It is Marion Renault back here on the program. Marion, how are you? I'm doing good. Thank you. Good to hear. Uh, what is Friday looking like for you? We're just about to hit the weekend. Are you? Is this a training day, a rest day? Where am I getting you? It is my rest day. It is my, my one day out of the week rest day. This is when I do interviews and photo shoots and stuff like that. I just catch up on all the other stuff that you part of the fight game. Cool. Well, I appreciate you having me part of your media day. Um, tell me how this all came together because uh, obviously I do the podcast with your coach, Jim West. I heard it was just, you know, a few days after uh, that this fight had sort of been on your radar after the Macy Chasson fight. So, so from your vantage point, when did you find out that Misha Tate was possibly your next opponent? Honestly, I found out the Tuesday right after my fight. So believe it or not, I had texted my management and told him, hey, I have one more fight on my contract. I want it to be my retirement fight. He's like, what? Wait, what? <laughs> I, was like, I already knew that this was something that I wanted to do um, when, I find my, when I signed my four-fight contract. I just I knew that at the end of that four-fight contract, that would be it for me. I'd be in my mid-40s, and you know, I'm giving it a good run as, as hard as I could, and I just knew that that would be it. And so when I told him that, he's like, okay, I'll let Mick know. And I swear within two days, you know, I'm over here catching up on some donuts because me and, and Macy had a long fight camp. And I get a call and he's like, hey, so I, I have a fight for you. And I'm all, already? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, okay, who is it? And he's like, Misha. And I'm like, all right, let's run it. That's that awesome. Went. Um, I've never been the person to say no to anybody. And so this was just one of those instances. He's like, are you sure you don't want to talk to your, your coaches, your camp? I'm like, nah, man, we're going to fight. Well, it's so cool that this is the, the last fight, you know, that you have in your career against someone that, I mean, you fought, we, this is something we've talked about. You fought pretty much everyone on the roster and Misha's the one that, that is one of the ones that you haven't. So just how excited were you to have her as your, you know, her uh, comeback fight and your retirement fight. That's pretty cool. I thought that was a great storyline. I, I, I give it up to the UFC, the matchmakers. That that was kind of smart on their part. Mm-hmm. I, I thought it was it's quite the honor, honestly, to be able to fight her just because it, she was somebody that I watched from Strike Force days, um, very early on when I was just starting out in MMA. So it, it was it was quite the honor to be like, okay, finally it's coming full circle. And now I get to fight the person, the one person that I wanted to fight. Did you have any idea she was coming out of retirement? Because I think a lot of us, especially in the media, we didn't have a clue that this was, I, I know she was back in Vegas training a bit, but I, I did not think that she was coming out of retirement. Oh, I knew she was coming out. You did? Okay. What, what, just because did like sort of word of mouth or what, what sort of led you to that? I had followed her and certain cues that she was doing, certain things that she was doing. I was like, ah, she wants to fight again. She's coming out. That's great. Uh, so wh- how, how do you match up against a fighter like this? Because obviously Misha hasn't fought in a while. I mean, uh, you know, a couple of years. So is it just, are you expecting the Misha that we saw last in the cage? Like how, how have you sort of prepared yourself for this fight? Pretty much how I prepare for pretty all fighters is I just work pretty much every aspect of the game. I work my bad my bad points, my bad positions, what I consider bad, I sharpen up or fine tune what I think is good, my good stuff, my good positions. But it's one of those things where we just don't know what she's going to bring, so we have to pretty much prepare for everything. And that's what I'm doing. I, I go in there thinking she's the black belt of jiu-jitsu phenom. She is the black belt of wrestling and the black belt of stand-up. And so I go in there with high alert, um, understanding that I need to come and bring my A game as well. The main event getting canceled with, with Holloway and Rodriguez, were you were you and Misha ever offered that or was that something that you that crossed your mind that maybe you could have been the main event because now they have Islam Makashev headlining? Well, I did text Dave, my manager, and said, hey, why can't we be the main event? I did text him and his response was, are you ready to go five rounds? And I'm like, um, hell yeah. Um, So I don't know what happened with that. We weren't offered it. I wasn't anyways, but I did throw it out there saying, hey, I'll take the main event um, if you guys can't find anybody, but it didn't happen. Training camp, how have you structured things uh, for this camp? Because you got a lot of notice. I mean, this fight we knew about months ago, so that's probably ideal amount of time uh, heading into the matchup. Mm -hmm. 
Mm, Fight Camp has been going actually really well. It just kind of segued off from Macy's. Like I said, me and Macy had a long fight camp. We had two different um, scheduled fights, and so it was just it felt like a fight camp that never ended. And so I did take a, a couple of weeks off just to get my body to reacclimate to wanting to go back into another hard sparring session, hard training. Um, after that, it just kind of picked up from there, and it just kind of trickled down. It's just been an amazing fight camp, believe it or not. How has it been, too? I don't know how much you've got a chance to work with her, but with Aspen's fight coming up you know, close to the same time and actually fighting Macy, who you last fought, uh, how much of that has, has that been a benefit, just the fact you guys are fighting so close together? Mm, I actually haven't had the opportunity to go up north to train with her. and oh, interesting. By, we're just kind of stuck um, in our area, and um, I... I was at the tail end of school ending, and I had resigned from teaching, so I didn't want to leave like a week in advance or a week and, and not have somebody teaching the kids. I wanted to make sure I was there for them towards the very end, so it just kind of didn't work out, um, but she's getting some good training. I see who she's training with, and she's going to be a fierce, fierce competitor for Macy. That's great. So is it mainly just training with your husband and just uh, the, the people at your gym, I guess? Um. Not just my husband. There's people in the area that um, we bring in to train with as far as um, certain aspects of the game. The stand-up, um, we've changed that up. We've changed up wrestling just a little bit. Um, as far as the jiu-jitsu goes, we brought in um, some female black belts and some female um, brown belts as well just so they can kick my butt over and over. That's great. Um, now, I heard, and I wanted to make sure I'm confirming this, your son's going to be in your corner, I heard, for this fight. He is. He's How cool gonna... is that? How, like, like, what brought you to that decision? I, I, is it because it's the last fight, or what, what brought you to that? Mm. I wanted him to experience everything that goes on behind the scenes. And what I've done over the past 15 years, I have... I have and I do feel a little guilty about how I was and I am selfish with my training and I had to be in order to be where I am now. And so as a me as a mother, when I was a single parent, I had to bring him everywhere I went. And so there's a little bit of guilt. He missed opportunities. He missed um, birthdays. He missed reunions, family gatherings, et cetera. And I didn't want him to think it was all for nothing. I knew he understood to a point and so I asked him, hey, Bubba, do you want to be in my corner in my last and final fight with Misha Tate? First off, when he heard that I was fighting Misha, he was super excited for me. I have a video of him saying, what? That's exactly what you wanted? Because he knew. He, mm -hmm. he knew. He heard the conversations. He heard the talk. And he was excited for me. And I asked him, well, the next question is, do you want to be in my corner? And he couldn't say anything. He was like, mom, mom I don't know. I don't know about all this, mom. I just... uh." I have to get back to you. He actually got back to me two weeks later. Really? Okay. So you had to <laughs> definitely had to think about it a bit. Yeah. Yeah. He's a, he's an introvert. He's nothing like me. Mm -hmm. So I, when I heard back from him, he's like, you know what? We started this journey together. We're going to finish it together. I'll be in your corner. And he's taken everything seriously from being at my training to training with me. Um, it's kind of been such an honor to see him and he, it's something he wants to do. He threw himself into it and he's taking it very seriously. And, and the timing worked out too, cause I, I imagine his semester's over. So he's probably back home right now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And he, he doesn't have a choice. He has to come home for the summer to visit me. He right. doesn't have a choice. Like get home. Yeah. Mom needs some time too. <laughs> Are you still calling him a lot? That was something I asked Jim. Every day, all the time. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we do this little video chat. It's called Marco Polo, and we're we're always chatting with each other. He's like, "Mom, it's not Sunday because Sunday's supposed to be our day." And I'm like, oh, "I'm just thinking about you. You can hit me up. I pay for your phone." And so he's like, "Oh, <laughs> there you go. That's how you get him in is, is the the yeah. phone payment." Yeah, that's how I maintain that. I'm like, "I'm still paying." Awesome. Um, how do you see the fight playing out on July 17th? It's gonna be. It's gonna be very intense. There's gonna be a lot of pressure from both of us. Um, it's going to be, it's going to be a battle and I'm excited. I'm excited to see where it's going to go. Uh, I feel like you're going to see the best yet of myself that's to come and pretty much that's it.
Is there some memory that you've had in your career so far that really stands out to you or something that, you know, was really maybe that you're proud of or something that you, you look back on and you say, you know, that was a really awesome moment in my career. Does anything stand out when I say that? Mm, pretty much the relationships that I've made with some of the female fighters that I fought, um, we've been able to at least be friends, um, cordial to each other, support one another. And I, I found that um, empowering. I, I, I don't think that there's any animosity with me regarding any of the fighters, but I like the fact that they could follow and um, we can just support each other, even if there was a loss or a win, regardless. It was just like, hey, we, ha- we went to battle. Why are we fighting on the outside? So I think I've, I've truly cherished that. Um, I did, I think I give Dana a, a high five for pulling off an athletic uh, summit a few years back. I think it was 2018 when he brought in a whole bunch of guest speakers, one of them being Kobe Bryant. Uh, I think that was the, the largest turning point for me, believe it or not. He had said something during his speech. Basically, he had said, what are you going to do when you're done fighting? And obviously, all the fighters were like, well, we don't have a million dollars to put in Under Armour and blah, blah. You know, I was like, but that's not what I took from it. I said, what am I going to do when I retire from fighting? Um, What do I have to show for? Am I just going to go back to teaching and that's where I'm going to retire? That's not what I wanted to do. And so I, after I heard him speak, I basically called up my husband. I said, we're opening up a gym. We're leaving this toxic environment that we're in and we're opening up our own gym and we're going to run it the way we need to. And I'm going to be able to train whenever and with whoever I want to train with. And three months later, we opened up. I remember that. Yeah. And it's so cool to see all the progress you've made since, since opening up as well. And, and, you know, the, I I know just every, every time I'm seeing a different post about, you know, the gym growing and everything. So that must be really cool. And, and that you have something, like you said, the groundwork 2018, you put in that and now you're all set up for retirement. So that must be awesome as well. Just to look back on where you've been from that summit to to now. Right. Yeah. It's, it's 100% awesome. And, and who knew, who knew that somebody, and, and that's the thing is, you can say something to somebody, you don't know how much of an effect you're going to have on them. So as a teacher, I have a great um, respect for every word that comes out of my mouth because I know at some point something's going to connect with them and they're going to either take it in a good way or in a bad way. So how do I want to leave that memory? And that memory of me with Kobe and him not even knowing what he did, how he changed my whole entire life, I just thought that was phenomenal. And I, I, I will forever thank not only Dana for putting on the athletic summit because there was a lot of great guest speakers there. I took a lot from them. Um, but also from Kobe for, you know, just spewing exactly what, what you need to do as an athlete, you know? Yeah. No, that's great. Uh, before we go, just one more quick question. Uh, we had Clarissa Shields make her uh, mixed martial arts debut a few weeks ago. Did you happen to catch it? And if so, what did you think? Uh, <laughs> Um, I did catch the tail end of it. I don't think that I watched the whole entire fight, but from some of the comments um, and some of the updates that we got from it, obviously, you know, she's got the stand-up down pack. It's just the ground game, and that takes time. So hopefully she um, invests in herself and puts time into learning, really, truly learning groundwork and getting with um, some good People who know not only wrestling, but also jujitsu. So that way she can be the full uh, all around rough fighter that she used to be. And I want to thank you for always making the time, Marion. Really appreciate it. And uh, really looking forward to this fight. It's UFC Fight Night coming up here July 17th. Uh, anyone you want to thank? Any sponsors? Any social media? I'll give you the last word. Um, honestly, I just want to thank all my trifecta members. Um, I want to t- thank all my partners that come in. And give me their time uh, away from their spouses. Thank their spouses as well. Thank you for letting me beat up or get beat up on by your um, significant other. Um, thank my husband and my my immediately family. My immediate family. Honestly, this game wouldn't have happened. Um, I wouldn't have gone this far if I didn't have their support. Their support means the most to me. So I want to just reach out and say thank you to them the most. 